Hello everyone! I've realized, looking through the comments you've left last week, that for some reason I lost sight of the fact that I should have told you more about Kilninian and about our houses and everything we've accomplished here in these 10 years. I mean, everyone who comes here, the hundreds of people who have come here every summer to be with us on pilgrimage, they hear this again and again, and um, I apologize for repeating what they already know. But when we started this whole work, and when I was explaining to you every week what we are doing, there were maybe a hundred of us, if there were a hundred of us, working to make this monastery happen. Behind me, you see Kilninian. Kilninian means the Church of Ninian, the Church of Saint Ninian. And if you come to Scotland, or if you are from Scotland, you will see a lot of places uh, beginning with Kill, Kill Patrick, Kill Brandon. It doesn't really mean that we want to kill those people, it simply means the Church of so and so. So Kilninian simply means the Church of Saint Ninian. And it makes perfect sense that St. Ninian should be commemorated because behind Kilninian, we'll go there in a few minutes, there is the well of St. Ninian. And that well remembers the fact that St. Ninian, sometime either towards the end of the 4th century, so late 300s, or in the early 400s, St. Ninian came to these islands and brought Christianity here for the first time. He was here way before St. Brandon, who was here before St. Columba, of whom most of us know. Because of that well, the memory of the saint was kept. And because of that memory, and because of that well, when St. Columba and his monks arrived to Iona, and they started to do missionary work on Mal as well, Obviously, this was one of the first places on Mal where they settled. And also behind me, I think just where my finger points, that's known as the Hermit's Cell. It marks the place where the first beehive cell was built in the 500s, once a monastery, once a monastic community was established at Kilninian. Of course, that is not the original building, but it simply marks the place of that hermit's cell. And then around that hermit, a community was formed. My suspicion, but it is just a suspicion, is that that first hermit must have been Maher, or Saint Maher. I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing his name, but... Um, I, I have that suspicion because among those 12 monastics who traveled to Iona with St. Columba, St. Maher was the one who brought Christianity back to Mal. He was the one who, I think before he ended up doing missionary work in Aberdeen, he, he did missionary work on Mal as well. And it makes sense, it makes spiritual sense and historical sense that the first place he would come would be here because of the presence of that ancient well dedicated to a saint whom they all knew and whom they all honored, Saint Ninian. We got Kilninian in 2010, and the first main event that happened was that in 2013, in November, there was a very bad, a horrible storm that hit the island, and it took down some of the trees. In fact, they're just there, and they, they simply fell over the bell tower and the roof, and they took down the bell tower, and they badly damaged the roof, and we simply had to replace the roof. When we started we thought we would have to just repair it, but then because no repairs had been done in close to 300 years, the inside of the roof was badly damaged and the timber was rotten and falling down, so insurance didn't cover anything because they considered that to be historical pre-existent conditions, so we had to pay for all of that ourselves. Some of you remember, those of you who have helped me from the very beginning. Some of you remember that the first thing I asked your help for was to replace the roof at Kilninian, because that ended up costing over 200,000 pounds.
we are now just behind Kilninian and you can see in front of the church another island called Alva and at the very end of Alva there's Gometra and um, you can also see from this position the little vestry room behind Kilninian which is where um, we had to do a lot of restoration work as well the trees that affected the church also affected the vestry room and you can see the bell tower very clearly from here which was taken down in the storm it was a nightmarish time because I was still a student in Durham at the time I was living off my scholarship and I literally had absolutely no funds available and we started from scratch with a roof that fell down over us but God helped us we got through it and uh, now we have a healthy building weatherproof we still have inside you may hear a hum when you get closer we have a dehumidifier that runs constantly even when we are not here because the humidity uh, in the walls is still very very high and some of the rain that got infiltrated in the walls is still in the walls we have to drain it out and dry it before we can replaster entirely we have already re replastered i think over 95 percent of the church but there still are parts i'll show you where we need to replaster in a strange way the very beauty of Kilninian and the history that it has are of course our greatest blessings and the main source of courage for me personally to keep on going despite everything because I know it's worth it and I know that in this cemetery there are hundreds of Christians, hundreds of monastics who have lived here and prayed here and I know that through their prayers I have hope of salvation as well. But although they are our greatest blessings, these are also our greatest challenges. And that's because Kilninian is on um, the scenic route of Mull, which is an area of Mull enlisted as a natural reserve. And being in a natural reserve, of course, comes with a multitude of limitations, legal limitations, in terms of what you can build, what you can do. But then also Kilninian is a historical monument, a listed monument, part of the national heritage. And that comes with another set of limitations and regulations, um, which of course are always, always manifested in how difficult it is to do something, to build something, to repair something, and also on how expensive it is, because every single thing from replacing the roof, of course, to simply repairing a window, if a window is broken, requires a planning application, which requires everything from an architect to all sorts of other specialist uh, advice. As I've told you, the first monastic community at Kilninian was established in the 500s by one of the monastics from the monastery on Iona, uh, one of the 12 monks who had traveled to Iona together with Saint Columba from Ireland. The current building, as you see it, Kilninian today, was built in 1755 and actually you can see just above the door the year when it was built. Let's go inside. I'm sorry for the sound. We need to turn the dehumidifier off first. This is it. This is really the heart of the monastery and everything else is just in addition to Kilninian. This is where, because of those monastics who've been living and praying here since the 500s, this is where we all feel praying with the saints and every aspect every detail in this place had required some sort of repairing or taking care of or just plain replacement like like the roof the entire roof was taken down the floor itself was in need of great repair as well actually the darker areas in the floor like here for instance 
you can see where um, the water seeping through the fallen roof has done the greater damage to the floor. And the same applies to the walls. All the plastering that you see around is new replastering. It's got, I think, three or four years now since we replastered, and we have left certain areas, like here, for instance, unplastered just because there was so much water that had seeped in the walls that it was impossible to replaster. This is what the walls and the roof looked like everywhere in the church before we repaired. This is what it looked like for the two years of me running everywhere trying to get the funds to save this building. The heating is new as well. The furniture, of course, is new as well. And we all require replastering. Because look, only in what I said three or four years since we replastered, this is happening already pretty much everywhere. So in a few years, I think not more than two years, we'll need to completely replaster and hopefully by then, because of the presence of the dehumidifier, the air will be drier. It used to be that when I was trying to clean this place, instead of dust like now, see, we would just have mud. It was so wet. And then of course, all around us, the cemetery, and the reminder that one day, I and all of us, by the grace of God and the prayers of the Mother of God and the saints, we shall all be in the loving arms of Christ. If we come out the other way, we exit at the end of the church, where the vestry room is, just here. And just behind the church is where um, St. Ninian's Well is located. Going through the fence along this path and at the end of the path, the well commemorating the presence and the missionary work of the founder of this monastery, St. Ninian. Let's go there together. There is no need and no historical argument to doubt the presence of St. Ninian at Kilninian. There is another possibility that the church could have been dedicated to the nine virgin daughters of St. Donald, but because the well bears the name of St. Ninian, it's called St. Ninian's Well, and because we know from the little we know, from the life of St. Ninian, that he did travel to the Hebrides and he did missionary work here. And uh, given the fact that the early monastics from Iona settled here and we have the hermit's cell, which I've shown you, and then a community established around that hermit, there is no historical argument to doubt the presence, the work and the blessing of St. Ninian here at our monastery and there is the well under that rock the spring of clean pure water that was used for healing of bodily and spiritual afflictions was used for baptisms by Saint Ninian and all the monks who lived here May that same healing power and the blessings of the saints be with all of you who have made this miracle possible in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. By the prayers of Saint Ninian and all the saints, may we all be blessed. Because that spring actually comes out, gushes forth from there, from under that rock. It doesn't come from anywhere else, so it's not contaminated in any way by animals or just simply by the pollution around us. 
So to this day, whenever we have pilgrims coming here with us, we bless them with our water and we drink from that spring for the healing of our souls and our bodies. Our presence here today, the Monastery of All Celtic Saints, is just the concluding chapter of the history of Kilninian. Like many, like most, in fact, of the Celtic monasteries and hermitages in the Isles, Kilninian has gone through this beautiful circle of having started its life in the Orthodox millennium and then went through a period of Catholic ownership and then Protestant ownership, back to being owned by Catholics and now by the Orthodox. Saint Ninian came here in the late 300s, early 400s, and then Saint Columba established the first monastery here in the 6th century. And monasticism flourished at Kilninian until the end of the first millennium when, like all the other Celtic monasteries, the monastics here were either martyred by the Vikings or because of the frequency of the attacks, they just decided to leave the Isles and to go somewhere else. And after the end of the first millennium, Benedictine the Catholic monastics came and re-established many of these monasteries. You can see that on Iona, you can see that on Inch Canaf, you can see that pretty much everywhere. But that part of the history of these places also didn't last for very long because of course, the Reformation happened, and um, what the Catholics had built on the foundations of the ancient Celtic monasteries ended up collapsing, either being taken down at the Reformation or simply due to neglect and uh, abandonment. For us at Cuninian, this is coming full circle. The history of this place began with orthodoxy in the first millennium and all those beautiful Celtic saints and then going through the Catholic Benedictine part of his history being turned into a Protestant parish back into Catholic hands for a while it is actually from a group of Catholic monastics that we acquired Kilninian in 2010 only now to come back home into the Orthodox Church and it is beautiful to see that. It is beautiful to see how God never forgets a blessing he bestows. Once this place has been sanctified by the presence of Orthodox monastics, Orthodox priests, and Orthodox bishops Saint Minion, God never abandons such a place. This coming home of this monastery, this completion of the circle would not have been possible without God's blessing, without the prayer of the Theotokos and all the saints who lived and found their salvation here, and also without the work of a mad monk and the support of literally thousands and thousands of wonderful people like you who have supported me and helped me to re-establish, re-found this monastery. Saint Seraphim had a habit of never thanking his benefactors because he wanted God himself, he wanted Christ to be the one thanking them on the judgment day. You know my gratitude. You know that my heart is just too small to thank you for anything and everything you have done. Those of you who have sent money, those of you who have told me a good word when I needed it most, those of you who have encouraged me when I was beyond tiredness and feeling completely hopeless, those of you who have kept me for years and years in your prayers, those of you who have given me accommodation in your homes, those of you who have fed me, those of you who have given me advice when I didn't know which way to go. My heart is not large enough for the gratitude and the love I have for you. 
because God entrusted me with this work. God gave me this calling and I would have failed in this work. I would not have been able to fulfill this calling of mine without you. My history, my personal history, would not have been completed without your prayer and without your help. And for that I am grateful, not here, but eternally grateful. I will let Christ thank you on Judgment Day. I am simply begging him with every ounce of my being that your love and your generosity should cover mountains of human weakness because we are all weak and we are all sinful and the hope for salvation does not lie with our accomplishments, but with his love and his mercy. You and I, beloved ones, we are one. And I pray for you with the same love and the same despair. I pray for my own heart. Be blessed and be saved, dear ones. Amen.